I get so many requests to talk about beauty and by no means am I an expert at all, but I have been using a lot of the same products for a long time. So I feel like these are my holy grails. So I'm bare faced at the moment. I have done my skincare. So the first thing I like to do in the morning is obviously shower. I don't wash my face in the shower. I just use water. And then my morning skincare routine looks a little bit like this. It's really simple, four products. I always like to use a hydrating mist. This one is the one I'm using at the moment, but I am not loyal to a specific brand. My favorite is probably actually the Aven Thermal Water. Just to get some hydration on my face in the morning, I find that my skin leans towards being dry. I would say I've got quite normal skin, so I always like to hydrate. Then I go in with this product, which is a slightly controversial one, but this is one of my holy grail beauty products. Probably one of the top products in this whole video. This is the COSRX Advanced Snail Mucin. So this is, as the name suggests, snail slime, but it, it just works so well. My skin is always at its best when I'm using this regularly. It's 96% snail mucin, and it just really adds hydration, plumpness. I just feel like my skin looks more even when I'm using it. It doesn't necessarily tackle acne or redness or anything, but it just makes my skin feel plump and healthy and smooth. Then I go in with a moisturizer. I don't use expensive moisturizers unless I get little free samples. Like I just got a free sample of this Augustin Spader Rich Cream, which I believe is really expensive. So I will be trying that. But generally, if I'm buying a moisturizer, it's pretty much the cheapest one I can find because. I feel like they all do the same thing. This is the simple one that I'm using at the moment. It's about three pounds and it's really good and it's just not irritating. It moisturizes, it stops my skin from being dry and I feel like that is the main job of a moisturizer. So I don't feel like I need to invest in expensive moisturizers. And then finally, I guess the most most important step in my morning skincare routine is an SPF. This is the one I'm using at the moment. I just repurchased this actually. I'm not sure where the new one is, but this is the Aven 50 SPF UVA UVB. This is really nice. It's fairly affordable. SPFs can get a little bit expensive. I've tried a few other ones. I like the Beauty Pie one as well. If you're a member of Beauty Pie, I have so many lip balms. I have a lip balm in every bag, every coat pocket, the one I love actually is the cheapest one. It's the Nivea Hyaluron Lip Moisture. I find that this is really, really nice and it's only about four pounds. The other one I have near me is the Biosense uh, Squalane Rose Vegan Lip Balm. This one is really good as well, but it is a lot more expensive than the um, Nivea one. And I wouldn't say it's, you know, any better, but just trying to make sure I use this um, every morning and every evening. Okay, and then moving on to makeup. So makeup is something that I, I'm not very good at. I wear the same makeup every day if I'm wearing makeup at all. And as I said, my skin is like okay. I definitely used to struggle with acne more. Um, even if you go back and watch my older videos, my skin is definitely has definitely improved since then. I think most of my skin problems are hormonal rather than kind of um, like to do with the products I use. It's definitely more of a hormonal inside thing. I get the occasional spots on my chin, especially um, around my period. And I do struggle quite badly with scarring. I find that if I do get a spot, it does usually scar. So I have a few um, acne scars. And then I do also struggle a little bit around here, as you can see with what I believe is perioral dermatitis. It comes and goes. And to be honest, I've tried treating it and it's always failed. So I've kind of given up with it and I just kind of live with it. In terms of foundation and concealer, I have been using the same concealer since I was probably about 13, 14, since I started wearing makeup. And if you were on YouTube in 2011, 2010, you'll know this product. This is the collection Lasting Perfection Concealer. I have not moved on from this. This was like a cult classic in 2010. Please let me know if you were around on YouTube when people were using this and swearing by this. I still use this because it's a great concealer and it's about four pounds. And I've barely tried any other concealers in the last 13, 14 years. Um, I still use this one. I know everyone else has moved on. This is what I use. I don't always wear foundation. Sometimes I will wear foundation, particularly for filming videos, but I don't always feel like I need to. I haven't really found a foundation that I love. If you have any recommendations, let me know. I would love like a light to medium coverage foundation. Good for like normal to dry skin and good for pale skin as well because sometimes I struggle with getting a foundation that's light enough for my skin. And I, I don't have a mirror so this might be a struggle because I can't really see in the viewfinder. I actually just got this mirror from my Liberty Beauty Box in a little cute little bag. So I will use this to do my makeup while I chat to you. I'm not going to use foundation today just because 
I don't really feel like my skin needs it. I don't like to wear like unnecessary amounts of makeup while my skin is clear and good because I have had bad skin in the past. I know what it's like to feel like you have to wear foundation. So when I feel like I don't have to, then I don't really want to. In terms of like application, I always just use my finger. I feel like it is the best way to apply makeup. It's warm. It makes the products just like melt into your skin. So I will just kind of put that onto any places where I have acne scarring, a little bit of redness, a little bit of unevenness which tends to be in like the lower half of my face I don't know if I can be bothered to do un underneath my fringe I really hope this is interesting I feel like people are gonna not watch this video because <laughs> I just feel like what I'm saying is really not very interesting but a lot of you have especially on Instagram as I said have requested this video so I, I didn't want to not do it okay so that's basically it so that's just evened out my skin slightly and then the next thing I do generally is I will go in with a bronzer blusher powder situation my favorite by far is and this is a more expensive one the hourglass ambient lighting palette I bought this Black Friday 2020 it's probably out of date. I love this palette. The bronzer is the one, if you can see, that I've used by far the most. I find this is quite a good, like, natural bronzer for my pale skin. And then I tend to use this blush blusher on most days. Sometimes I'll use this one. And then this is a highlighter, which I sometimes will also use if I remember. Put that... Again, I cannot see what I'm doing. So you'll have to bear with me if it looks terrible. So cheekbone, under the chin. And if I didn't have my fringe down... I would also do my forehead. Okay, so that's the little bit of bronzer and then I would just go in with the same brush, a little bit of blusher, kind of on the apples and up. Oh, that was too much. This does blend quite nicely though. I would recommend these palettes. Like they are expensive, but as I said, I've had mine for three years and I use it pretty much every day and I'm only just starting to run out of the bronzer. Everything else I have loads, loads left. And it's just like a really natural makeup fairly noticeable really <laughs> i notice it and i think it just makes me look a little bit more even and a little bit more glowy the next thing i do which i actually will have to move my fringe for after all of that is my eyebrows so i just use an eyebrow gel i used to fill my eyebrows in and then i noticed that they they look kind of worse when i fill them in they're definitely sisters and not twins and i do tend to prefer that more natural sort of eyebrow look as opposed to the really kind of defined shaped brow I'm not sure if you can even tell the difference <laughs> now I've done that. I'm not blessed with the best eyelashes. They're quite straight and not that long. I do like to curl them just to give them a little bit of a lift. And then the mascara I've been using is the Ico Beach Waterproof Mascara. This stuff is insane. I could swim in this and it would not smudge. It is the best waterproof mascara I've ever used. I don't always use waterproof mascara, but I do often have the issue of mascara smudging under my eyes. You can cry, you can swim, you can sweat, and this will still look perfect. So these are some of my favorite lip products. If I'm gonna go for a lipstick, then I'll probably go for a red, and these are my three favorites depending on the tone that I want. This Suzanne one, you'll know, I've mentioned this before, this is a great like true red lipstick. I would say it's quite a neutral tone. It's not too warm and not too cool. I feel like it's quite universally flattering. I've worn this loads since I got it. I know you can't buy it at the moment. It's a really good one just for like a a classic red and then I have a slightly more warm toned red which probably doesn't suit me as much because I'm more cool toned but this one is by L'Oreal this is the Colorish 364 I'm not even sure what the shade name is or anything but it doesn't really look that warm in the bullet but um it does come on on me anyway it comes across as slightly warmer and obviously this is quite an affordable choice and then my favorite red lipstick is one I bought recently and this is definitely more of a splurge this is the Lisa Eldridge Velvet I'm not exactly sure what it's called velvet lip color in Duchess and this is definitely more of a cool toned darker bluey red and this one I would say suits me the most I do really need to get a lip liner to go with it though a lip liner is not something I own I usually just use the lipstick but I do think that it would help with migration of the lipstick if I had a lip liner if I'm not wearing a lipstick I'm probably just wearing some kind of balm or gloss I really like this pixie gloss actually this is the pixie 
Peony Bloom Gloss. It's just like a pinky, mauvey gloss. This one is minty, so it makes your lips tingle and it's quite refreshing. And then a recent discovery, which is I think what I'm gonna wear today because it kind of matches my jumper, is this Clinique. This is like a cult classic. This is the Clinique Almost Lipstick in Black Honey number six. I heard loads of people on TikTok talking about this specific shade. I kind of wanted to try it. So I picked this up recently and it's a really nice, just like subtle wash of color but it's slightly darker than anything else I own. It's really nice, it's really balmy. It's not like a proper, proper lipstick, but it definitely has a colour to it. It's kind of like a, a your lips but better shade, at least for me. It's slightly darker than my lips. I feel like it is just a nice wash of colour when I don't want the maintenance of a lipstick and having to worry about it transferring or migrating. First thing I do in the evening is to cleanse. My favourite cleanser is this one. It's the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. I feel like this is a dupe, a, a less expensive version version of the LMS I can't remember what it's called, but the LMS one. This is about 20 pounds. It's a really nice cleansing balm. It does get my waterproof mascara off. I just need to like massage it in for a, a minute or two. Another skincare product that I swear by is the Walida Skin Food. I saw, I think it was Bambi Does Beauty on Instagram. I saw use this and recommend this. And as I said, I do get dry skin both on my face sometimes and my body. I know, I don't really think you're supposed to use this on your face because it does have essential oils in it, but I tend to use this on my body, like on like my knees, elbows, feet, if I have dry skin and it is really, really good. So I would recommend that if you do have dry skin. To be honest, I have used it on my face and it has never broken me out or irritated me. I'm just looking in my skincare bag to see if I have any other cult products that I feel like I have to talk to you about. I guess I could talk about nails because a few people do ask me which colours I wear on my nails and recently I have gone back to Essie. So I did used to do my own gel nails at home. Sometimes I just like to use a classic Essie polish. I feel like no one paints their own nails anymore. I feel like everyone gets their nails done but I just can never justify the price of that. It's just not something that I want to work into my budget. I'd rather spend that money on other things. So I do my own nails at home. Firstly, the Sally Hat, ah! as like a base coat, the Sally Hansen Maximum Growth. This is like a nail strengthener, nail treatment that I use as almost like a base coat when I paint my nails. Then I'll go in with my color and it is typically one of these three shades. I only really own these nail varnishes. They're all Essie. This one is like a mauvey pinky shade. This is Swoon in the Lagoon. I really like this one. My favorite most worn shade is what I've gone, got on at the moment. And this is Mackie Me Happy by Essie. A really nice kind of burgundy red tone. I really like that one. Definitely my most worn in the winter, in the autumn winter. I've got hair on my lip. And then finally this one, which is a darker, more vampy, quite close in shade to my jumper actually. This is Shearling Darling by Essie as well. And then one thing I hate is waiting for nails to dry. So I always use an instant dry top coat. This is the one I'm using at the moment. It is also from Sally Hansen, the instant dry top coat. And it does really work. It's really good. Finally, I'll talk about hair care because I do get asked a lot about my hair. And to be honest, I don't, it's kind of the same. I don't use that many expensive products on my hair. I do naturally have very thick and I've always had quite healthy hair. I have been very lucky in that respect. It's definitely mostly genetic. I do get regular haircuts. I have never dyed my hair either. So that obviously helps the condition of my hair. In terms of heat defense, I use the Tresemme, cheap and cheerful heat defense whenever I use heat on my hair. And then my hair oil is more expensive. This is the one I'm using at the moment. This is the Gizu Honey Infused Hair Oil. This is really expensive. And I got sucked into the hype with this one and I actually don't really like this. It's a little bit greasy. It's okay on the ends, but I don't like to put it above sort of here because I do find it makes my hair feel a little bit lank and greasy. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, especially because it is so expensive. My favorite hair oil of all time is, if you're interested, the Liz Earl hair oil. I don't know what it's called, but it's the only hair oil they do. And it is always out of stock. It's always unavailable. I can never find it. I got it for Christmas one year, I think a couple of years ago, and it smells divine. And it's really lovely, lightweight, but nourishing. So I have been using for the past, I think this has lasted me about a year. I bought this in the January sales. This is the Fresh Rose face mask. So this is more for like um, sensitivity, hydration, that kind of thing. Put this on, I will use it for 
for five, 10 minutes. Usually when I do have a bath, actually I'll use a face mask. I have one use of this left. So I think I'm gonna use it tonight. And then I do love a sheet mask. I really don't know if they do anything, but I like the pampering feel of doing a sheet mask more than whether they actually have any results or not. Usually I get cheaper ones. I get the Garnier ones, those are quite nice. This one I just got in my Liberty Beauty box. So I'm really excited to use this because it's definitely more of a bougie one. This is the 111 Skin Rose Gold Brightening Facial Treatment Mask. So yes, I'm very excited to use that actually. And then I will also do a hair mask once a week. These two are my favorites. I love the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. This is a deep conditioning treatment. Um, you leave it on. It says to actually put it in before shampooing and leave it on for 20 minutes. I tend to put it on overnight and then wash it out in the morning. Very well recommended and reviewed. The other one I have is the Aveda Botanical Repair Hair Mask. This is the strengthening, strengthening overnight serum for building bonds and repairing split ends. My hairdresser uses Aveda, so this is why I have this one. For my body, the only thing I really swear by is dry brushing. I love to dry brush my skin. I don't do it enough, but whenever I kind of have a pamper evening or I remember to, I will use a dry brush to kind of brush my skin towards my heart, get the blood flowing, the lymph flowing. And yeah, I do really enjoy doing that. And then I'll just use like a basic body moisturizer, nothing special. I do sometimes use, sorry, this is getting really rambly now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this video in a second. I do sometimes use, I have a massive one of them, the Tan Lux, the Gradual. If I want a gradual tanner, I don't fake tan my skin because I'm so pale. I just can't keep up with it. I feel like it always looks orange. It always looks streaky, but I will sometimes use a gradual tanner, especially when I go away, if I wanna look slightly more golden. I got a huge pump bottle of it. I think I got this on QVC or something. And that is it. Those are my beauty favorites. The only thing I kind of treat myself to on the odd occasion is a new nail color or a new lipstick. But other than that, like the skincare and the basic makeup, I've been using the same stuff for years and years. So if anyone asks, I can now direct them to this video. I hope you maybe got some recommendations. I know it's a little bit random. It's not my usual topic. And I know some of you won't be interested. But as I said, I always wanna do, if I get video requests from a few different people, then I always wanna film them because I wanna film what you guys actually wanna watch. So if you have any other video requests for me, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any recommendations that you think would work really well for my kind of skin, skin tone, skin type, I would love to know. I will also put some other videos, some fashion related videos, which is much more my forte on screen here, if you would like to continue watching. Otherwise, I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.